Tom, I think I love you and I hate you at the same time. I don't know how to feel about you, buddy. You are hit, man. I really like your stuff. You got a great philosophy. Thank you for doing what you do. I love your show. Now I'm going to listen to it every day. Man, you are the man. You're, you're saying everything that we're all thinking, and they need to know it. Hey, Tom, how are you? Great. Oh, man, it's cool. I'm actually on the phone, Tom Likas. I learned all my skills from this man called Tom Likas, and he's the freaking man. A month ago, I started listening, and I thought for sure, oh, my gosh, this guy's a jerk. But the more I started listening to you, the more you made sense when it comes to women and men. Um, and I hope that when my boys become of age, and I'm going to have them listen to your show because women are just, they're vicious. I turned the power off. I, I took my stuff. I moved out so she couldn't call the cops on me. Uh, she, she still wouldn't move out. So I actually, I, I fornicated a fake eviction notice. You did, you did what? You fornicated a fake eviction notice? Exactly, How'd yes. you do that? Did you I, roll it up first? You know, you're ruining people's lives, telling them to get abortion. I think I'm helping people save their lives, not ruin them. Well, I just think that that's just, like, disgusting. There is nothing disgusting about it. What if your mother would have aborted you, and you wouldn't be here right now? Well, then I wouldn't be doing the show. Somebody else would be doing this show. I don't think anybody else has a guts to do this show. You're just sick. I've had plenty of men over my house. They come over. They want to talk. I want to get to business, and they leave. I mean, we already had dinner. Whatever you had to say should have been said there. I don't when a guy comes over your apartment, you're ready to get the job done. Like, you really think you're coming over? Like, I'm not seven. We're not having sleepovers anymore. You know, it's kind of crazy. All right, uh, and your address is what? i got to write this down. What is your address? 20 years old. I have nothing to show for it. Um, my chick's pregnant. I have a job, full-time job. Applebee's. It ain't worth. It ain't worth nothing, really. You know. You didn't dream about where it making baby back ribs at Applebee's, did you, as a kid? Oh man, negative. By the way, uh, do, can you make your own potato skins at home? Oh man. Can you sing the baby back song from Chili's? <laughs> no, man. Because that could be yeah, your fear. I know you're at Apple. I know you're at Applebee's now, but one day you might have to go to the job interview at Chili's. They might make you get on your knees and sing that. Because <laughs> that's your future, son. You know, I broke up with him. He was a loser. He doesn't have much to offer. And so I guess I kind of feel guilty knowing he's not going to get somebody else anyways. Nobody wants a guy without a job and a car and has, isn't going anywhere. So oh, you did. I feel bad. Oh, I did at the time, thinking he had the motivation. And very shortly after that, I broke up with him. No, you shortly. thought that you were going to give him the motivation, that your magic vagina was going to uh, motivate him. That's what you thought. I know. I totally did. But, you know, my magic vagina has brought me a lot of other things in life. So I guess I thought it could bring me that and that it did not. So. No, there's nothing magic about a vagina. Most of the time I just get mad and turn the channel because you're so negative towards women. And I'm just wondering why you don't like women so much. That's not what you called to ask. You lied to the screener to get on the air, didn't you? I wish you'd play some good rock and roll. I'm in Phoenix and all I hear is you this is not, women. This is not a music show. If you want to hear music, there's plenty of radio stations that play it. You still haven't answered my question. I'm not going to. Go turn on a music station, dear, if that's what you really want. Maybe if all women sounded like you, I'd be even more naked. It's Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. We didn't get married because of the kids, like most situations. I got disconnected. From Paramount Pictures in Hollywood, it's Flash Friday. Attention, advertisers, you too can reach this prime demographic. <laughs> <laughs> and, now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about it's a different kind of a radio talk program we're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon no I am your host write down our toll free telephone number you're gonna need it it's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 
Six, six. Thank you for tuning again. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. One of those days you're just so happy to be at work. I'm, I, uh, I'm beaming. I'm absolutely beaming. You know, uh, when you dream of getting into this business, you don't dream of coming in on any given day and, you know, just saying, hey, good morning to you. I mean, you dream about coming in when something's really happening. It doesn't have to be important. It just has to be the stuff people care about. And how happy am I today to be sitting in this chair? How happy am I to be sitting here having heard the most unbelievable development of the Paris Hilton case? I mean, I have to stand corrected. Yesterday I came on this program and I said... I think a bunch of people are going to flail around and they're going to file motions and they're going to say this is wrong, wrong, wrong. And in the end, nothing's going to happen. Little did I know. And, you know, I was uh, cynical, as I frequently am. Little did I know the judge in the case today would make her go back to jail, not just go back to jail, but serve all 45 days of her sentence, minus the time she's already served. Well, they'll count, you know, everything since Sunday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So uh, she's got 39 days in jail, essentially. And uh, reports we heard yesterday that the judge had been consulted and had signed off on Paris uh, being uh, monitored at home. Not true. The judge says it's not true. He never approved that, never knew about it. And uh, also never proved uh, P- uh, Paris getting on the telephone instead of coming down into court for this hearing today. I don't know if you watch this on the cable channels today, but this was entertaining TV. I mean, hell, the uh, stock market was up 150 points today, and I didn't know until the, the trading day was all over. My day started today at 4.45 a.m., You all know I live in the Hollywood Hills. What you don't know is I live near Paris Hilton. And I knew that Paris Hilton lived over there on King's Road, but I uh, never really thought it would ever impact my life. You know, I didn't really think about it. Somebody I know who knows where she lives told me that she lives over there on King's Road. 1738 North King's Road. Yeah, that's right. I'm like, yeah, okay. (laughs) Little did I know that uh, one day, uh, today being that day, at 4.45 a.m., I would wake up to the sound of helicopters and airplanes that were so loud. There were so many of them. My house, which has double-hung windows, my house has uh, insulation, my house has all kinds of sound-deadening qualities to it. It was piercing right through everything. I I was awakened, and I could not, could not sleep. My day started at the crack of dawn. So since I couldn't sleep, I simply turned on the TV, and what an entertaining day it was. That's right. And uh, those of you who don't live here in Southern California, I feel sorry for you because, you know, yeah, MSNBC and uh, CNN and whatever, that that's all well and good. But you haven't lived until you've seen some of the local TV stations here in L.A. covering this stuff, like KTLA. Uh, and and uh, Channel 7 here in Los Angeles uh, had a very good shot of Paris coming out of her house in handcuffs. They had, I think, the best angle that I saw. It's good stuff. I'm enjoying the hell out of this. <laughs> anyway, uh, just just a great day. The phones are already s- smoking. Phones are smoking. And uh, I'm just beaming. I am so glad that finally, finally something went right in this screwed up system. We couldn't convict O.J. Simpson. Robert Blake walked free. But finally, something was done right. By the way, I was tooling around the office of the radio station today, and all the women in the office were like, oh, that's so sad. She's going back to jail. I couldn't believe it. 
so sad. That is so sad. Say, what, are you kidding me? This is great. This is great. All those little aspiring gold diggers who look up to Paris Hilton, now they have to see her going to jail, screaming and crying. <laughs> Just love it. I totally love it. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk with uh, cub reporter Steve Futterman of CBS Radio News. Steve was out there today in that mess, and he'll tell us what he saw. And I believe he might have been in the courtroom today, too. We'll talk with Steve Futterman coming up. We'll find out what happened. Meantime, of course, it's Flash Friday. Paris Hilton won't be flashing you today because she's, uh, she's in lockdown. But uh, you know what it means on Flash Friday, boys. Headlights on wherever you are. And I especially encourage you, like us fans, to turn those headlights on today, not just to get flashed, but to show our solidarity. You know, Are we thrilled to see Paris Hilton behind bars again? You bet we are. Her and her unspecified medical condition. By the way, somebody wrote to me who sounds credible. I'm not going to say what he said, but uh, somebody uh, wrote to me about what that unspecified medical condition might be. (laughs) Well, I guess when you make those tapes, anything can happen. You know those, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, all right, uh, we'll come back with uh, Steve Futterman. And, of course, on this Flash Friday, guys, you turn the headlights on to show your solidarity, show you're a like us listener, show you're in favor of the judge's decision to put uh, uh, to put Paris Hilton back in the slabber today. And, ladies, if you see a guy with the headlights on, you know what to do. Show him your cans. Show him your breasts. Show him your knockers. Let's get a look at him. For God's sake, you flash us, we will flash you. God, it's good to be alive. <laughs> Tell you what. The only missing, the only thing missing today when I woke up was the smell of napalm in the morning. I, that's how many helicopters were outside. It was that loud. And it went on from 4.45 this morning until about 11.30. Holy cow. All right, let's get this party started, baby. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800. Tom. I thank you for Flash Friday. This has got to be the greatest holiday in the world. It's Flash Friday. Yeah, baby. On the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. And uh, joining us right now, he was out in the middle of the fray today, is CBS Radio News reporter Steve Futterman. Steve! Uh, Tom, Tom, I'm a correspondent now. They they uh, promoted me. It, is that like uh, the Vatican? Do you get elevated to correspondent? Yeah, yeah. Uh, does smoke mm-hmm. come out the chimney three times or something? How does that work? No, only once. Uh, when they determine you're a correspondent, only once does the smoke come out. I see. Yeah, it's a different, uh, same idea, but different uh, format. How did your day go today? How did you begin your day, Steve? I began my day awakened at, uh, let's see, 3 30. I had to do a piece for CBC Television in uh, Toronto, so I had to be up, uh, you know, they do the East Coast stuff like they do here, uh, yes. you have to be up early, so I had to be on the air at 5 a.m., so I had to wake up at 3.30. 3.30 a.m.? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know what part of town you live in, Steve, but I, I live not far from Paris. Yeah, I know. And uh, so I woke up to helicopters at 4.45. So sort of like a rack, huh? Yeah, I didn't have to do any reports. I just woke up to helicopters Good, today. good. Uh, it's good to have the news media do their job. I'm sorry, Tom, that you suffered from us doing our job today, but uh, we must have uh, those aerial shots. They're very important. They haven't given you a helicopter, have they? Not yet. Okay, just checking. All right, so uh, after you were done with the CBC, uh, where did you have to go today? What then, did you have I to went, then I went to the courthouse on Hill Street, uh, which is normally a court for small claims court and traffic court. It's not really a court that major news normally happens at, but uh, it did last month when Paris Hilton was sentenced. Uh, by the way, in between that and today, I had a small claims court case there, which I lost. Uh, so I, I have sort of tough feelings about that place. <laughs> and uh, and then, then I was there today. I know the parking situation right now, so I got there very early. 
literally. And, uh, of course, when I arrived, there were, you know, around a dozen satellite trucks there already. I arrived there probably around 5.30 this morning. 5.30 this yep. morning? Yep. And uh, from what I could see on TV, uh, the, the bulk of the crowd was over on King's Road at Paris Hilton's house. Yep. But uh, then they all went like nuts uh, trying to get from the Hollywood Hills uh, downtown, and of course, you know what traffic can be like at that right. time of the day. This was a two-front war, Tom. Uh, we had to battle on the uh, on the Sunset Strip, and we had to battle in downtown Los Angeles. It was it was tough. It was tough. All right. So uh, by, by the time uh, Paris got there, what was the scene like down at the courthouse? Well, you know, at first we were given this. You know, we've gotten so many different stories the past couple of days. One story we got this morning, which no one will say that they're responsible for. We were told initially. Paris Hilton will not be at the court hearing. She will take part in the hearing via a telephone conference call. Uh, then suddenly we hear the judge says no. He's ordered the sheriff's department to pick her up and bring her back. Now, when court began, the judge started doing almost a roll call. He asked the city attorney, D did you know anything about this, that uh, she was going to do a telephone conference call? No. The defense team, did you know? No. The sheriff's department, no. So no one knows how this... Uh, emerged uh, as a possible story, but uh, it was incorrect. The judge is not really happy of the uh, about the events of the past couple of days. Yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, that, that was what was so confusing about the whole thing, the uh, what the original order was and then what it became today. Now, I heard on one of the TV stations today that uh, the judge ordered uh, Paris Hilton to be brought uh, to the courtroom and that there may have been some hesitation on the part of the sheriff's department. Is that true? A uh, rumor that we never really confirmed. Uh, lots of rumors throughout the day, I had people saying, I think she's going to have to be uh, taken on a stretcher, uh, how she was going to get there, would she be in a wheelchair. Essentially, she did not, uh, when they got there, it did take a, a bit of time before she finally emerged and was taken in the vehicle. I don't know if there were problems. I don't know if there were negotiations, if there was a negotiator inside uh, trying to work things out between the Sheriff's Department <laughs> and Paris Hilton. Sounds like a hostage situation, doesn't oh, it? Oh, my goodness. But, but eventually she did leave. I mean, we'll find this out, I'm sure, in the next uh, next week or so, exactly what happened, if there were any problems. But she did get in, into the vehicle, and eventually she got to the courtroom 11.05 Pacific time. I, I took it down in my notes. That's what time she walked into the courtroom. Now, here's the great thing yeah. about a job like yours, being the cub reporter that you are. Uh, no, Tom, uh, Tom, I'm a correspondent Oh, now. yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. Okay. Uh, anyway, okay. yeah, your job, what's yeah. great about it is, you know, here we're all sitting around today wondering what this looked like, wondering what this sounded like. No cameras allowed in the right. courtroom. No, I'm imagining no microphones allowed no, in the courtroom. Cause not I've legally. Seen, I've seen no audio. Uh, right. Believe me, we've been on the Internet trying to find audio. Uh, I've seen no video. Yep. Uh, all we get are these descriptions. But you were in the courtroom. I was in the courtroom. Right, tell us uh, what, uh, what what happened beginning at 11.05. Paris Hilton arrived. How did she look? Uh, Who was with her? What was going on? She looked uh, disheveled is the best I could say. I mean, she did not look prim and proper as she normally does. I'm sure she did not have as much time to get ready as she normally does. And she was uh, in a less than good mood. Uh, she, repeatedly during the one hour hearing, she was sobbing, uh, not very quietly sobbing. You would see her uh, put uh, tissue to her eyes. Uh, sometimes when the city attorney would talk about her, that she should go back to jail, she would shake her head very quietly, uh, very, very quietly, no. Uh, so she was obviously observing this. It seemed to me that when she got there, she sort of knew what the end result would be. And as the hearing went on, we sort of knew what the end result would be. The judge was really not happy. Who was he aiming his anger at? Did he have a, a fit? Did he rant and rave at Did somebody? Not, no, uh, he was he was angry. It seemed to me at the sheriff's department and some of the media for reporting things incorrectly. But for the most part, uh, it seemed like he was upset with, at the sheriff's department. There was this one member of the sheriff's department who he told us uh, kept saying how they were going to file papers, talking about her medical condition. He said, "Where are these papers?" Yeah, I was told I would get them the other day. I still have not received them. And what was very interesting, the defense team, Paris Hilton's defense team said, we had nothing to do with her release. Wow. And, yeah, they had nothing. It was the sheriff's decision. He decided that it was a medical issue, and he decided that she should be sent back. When the county council, who represents Lee Baca, when they spoke for the first time, they said, the sheriff will accept any decision you make today. Well, why couldn't we have done this? 
Absolutely. Uh, now, 48 hours ago, then we wouldn't have had to be here. I could have watched the Ducks win the Stanley Cup and celebrate the next day instead of having to work on Paris Hilton all day yesterday. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, uh, all right, so uh, nobody had anything to do with this. Uh, the uh, Sheriff's Department spontaneously, what, gave Paris Hilton a medical examination and spontaneously decided that she was too ill to serve her time? Well, there's suggestions that one of Paris Hilton's uh, psychologists or psychiatrists, someone who's worked with her before, did the exam and then reported to the doctors at the jail. This is what we've surmised. This is not uh, down in stone, but this is what we've surmised and what has been suggested, that this person who's worked with Paris Hilton before then told the jail doctors, hey, listen, uh, you know, she really is in bad shape. And then they agreed with the doctor, and that's what began this whole uh, exodus from the jail to Sunset Strip and now back to the jail. All right, now, uh, finally, uh, they uh, remand her back to jail yep. for the full 45 days. Mm, unclear, unclear. Uh, that's what the judge said, but remember... There are issues involving good behavior. The Sheriff's Department has insisted, and of course their credibility is not very good at the moment, but the Sheriff's Department has insisted that the 23 days, the reduction from 45 to 23 days, is what's, what's their, what they're forced to do because of California law. So it's a bit unclear how many more days she will serve. If it is 23 days, the, that minimum that we've been reporting until now, that would make it, I believe, 17 more days for her to serve, oh, another two and a half weeks so in the jail. two weeks from Monday, she would be out. Yeah. And uh, she's going to appeal this, I understand. Well, we'll see. Uh, I, I think even if she does appeal, remember, she was going to appeal the sentence to begin with, yes. remember? They never filed an appeal. Yes. These are very... I have been told by legal experts that when it's a probation violation, very, very difficult to appeal. Very difficult to appeal because you waive certain rights. Now, finally, Steve, we yep. are hearing that Paris uh, uh, reacted very loudly. Oh, yeah. What, that, what was that like? That was that was a scene that uh, is hard to forget. When the judge finally said, you're going back to jail, you know, when the moment came that she's leaving, she's being taken back by the deputies. Remember, she I'd said she had been sobbing repeatedly, so her yeah. face is very red. You can see that she's been crying. She stands up, looks at her mom, who's right behind her, Kathy uh, Hilton. She goes, Mom, Mom, it's not right. And she screamed several times at, at the very end. Really, uh, you had to feel sorry for her, even if you are, are having a bit of fun at her expense with this whole situation. That was a very painful-sounding scream, almost a wail, wailing on her part. Come on, do the wail for No, us. I can't do it. Come Tom. on, just yeah, just yeah. give us nah, a little bit here. Tom, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that good, Tom. Come not that good, Steve, sorry. I bet you could do it. Nah. You were there. We were there. We tried nah, to find nah. audio of this. You're, the, you're our only lifeline. Yeah, well, see... <laughs> You 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 need another lifeline. <laughs> Don't make me call somebody from uh, Univision or uh -oh. something like that. <laughs> Tell you what. So anyway, so she's uh, back in jail, and uh, you know, I sort of wonder everything. Looking back at everything in perspective. Wouldn't she have been better off to have not been released, to have her hope? You know, it's very emotional. She hates it, obviously. Or why, why would she not hate it there? But she thought for a moment that she was going to be able to serve the rest of her time at home. I'm sure her hopes were up. That's an emotional roller coaster. Probably would have been better just to stay in jail and serve the rest of the time. I know you have to run, but yeah. real quickly, did we ever find out why all that party equipment was being delivered to her home on Kings Road? The uh, space heaters and the... Uh uh, the, the, the party balloons, whatever else was arriving. Nothing official, but listen, my understanding is that there were no restrictions, or if there were restrictions, there were very few on what she could do inside the home. I mean, she could do more or less. I'm sure there were some restrictions, maybe with alcohol issues, etc. but she was fairly free inside that home. So if she wanted to throw a party, I believe, I, I could be wrong, but I believe she could. Well, as Paris would say, that's hot, Steve. <laughs> Thank you so much. Take care, Tom. We'll talk soon. All right. There he goes, CBS Radio News correspondent Steve Futterman. He was in the courtroom. He saw it. He heard it. There you go. 1-800-5800-TOM is our number. It's Philip on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Philip. Tom, I've been listening to you online in Detroit since I was eight years old. Love that. Love it myself. I got to tell all the guys in California how lucky they are to hear your blessings on the radio every day. Thank you so much. Thank you. I wanted to say that I love the fact that Paris Hilton got thrown back in the slammer. I think it's great for her. I think maybe she'll finally learn what it's like to be a normal human being. 
<laughs> God knows if I would have ran a friggin' red light, I'd have been thrown in friggin'. I'd have had. I'd have had to do cow transfer. Well, put it days. this way: if you if you uh, for whatever reason were convicted of a of a serious traffic violation, and then you got caught driving without your driver's license. Uh, do you think you'll be serving your sentence uh, having uh, uh, party equipment delivered to your home? No way, especially being the fact that I'm I'm in the military. I mean, they they uh, they hold us to like a higher standard. I ran a I ran a red light the other night, and they slapped me with a huge ticket, huge, and I was in a government vehicle. Yeah, I mean, I don't even I don't even know what to say about that. The fact that they even let her out of jail for one night is completely absurd. Wow. All right. Uh, well, yeah. thank you for that, Philip. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We'll take this break. We can take it later. We'll take it now, Gary. What do you want to do? We, sometimes when we're uh, involved in some kind of a story or there's events happening, we have to do stage direction on the air because this is all happening as I'm sitting here. We'll take the break now. All right. We'll take the break now. We'll come back. There's some kind of press conference coming up. We'll have it for you as we continue. <laughs> Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I'd ask you how you're doing, but i got to be honest with you. A guy that gets paid what you do to tell the truth, to tell it how it is, and to find wrath, you got to be doing great. It's the Tom Likas Show. the balls to send her back. I mean, look at OJ. Look at Robert Blake. Look at Mel Gibson. You're a celebrity. You are going to get privileges. That's just the way it goes. But you know what? She needs to, to stand up like a big girl she is and take responsibility for the action she's done. That, that's exactly right. Exactly what she's you know. Now, tell me, John, as the deputy sheriff yourself, how does that make you feel? You guys are out there. I mean, whether you pull people over for DUIs or you pull them over for probation violations or you pull them over for driving without a license, exactly. you spend that time. You, know what, Tom? R- you spend that time running their licenses. You spend the time booking them. Exactly. You, I mean, how do you feel when you see them just being let go? Like yeah, exactly, it feels like well, our job's not being appreciated. Why should we even stop somebody if they're going to release her? If I, I'm a deputy, I have friends that, have, that are deputies that got pulled over with, uh, by officers from another agency and have been arrested for DUI. And we don't get off doing three days. We do our same time. Yeah, we're going to be in solitary confinement, keep away status because you're a pri- previous officer or high uh, celebrity status or a person of interest. That's just the way it goes to protect yourself in the department. But, you know, there was no reason people, you know, she's saying that she has a medical condition that, I mean, I have people and when I was working custody that tried killing themselves just because they tried attempting suicide. That doesn't mean we're going to let them go. We sent them in the mental ward. We're on suicide. They're on suicide watch for the re- remainder of their time. It's unbelievable the way that, the, you know, that they're treating her. Unbelievable. And I'm glad. I think Baca right now is walking around with his tail between his legs. And, you know, to be honest with you, I'm glad the judge had the balls to send her back. Baca should be in, in uh, CRDF himself in custody. Yeah. Twin Towers. That, and that's my boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Unbelievable. No, it's it's outrageous. Uh, uh, you know, I as you know, I'm a longtime supporter of law enforcement I on this program. That, I support not just law enforcement in general, but I support the guys out there who get the job done. I, I can't imagine what it would be like uh, to be the officer who pulled her over, uh, booked her, uh, didn't uh, put up with any flirting, winking, crying, right. or whatever might have happened. He went and got the job done, and then uh, they, they just see her just let go yeah, like that. You're professionally. You're, yeah, it's like just, you know, spitting on your face practically. Well, it's not even like you're not even doing your job. Why should I even go out there, risk my life, stop somebody, do what's right, act professional, you know, because she's not, there's nobody that's above the law, and then just let her go? Unbelievable. I cannot believe that. It's, I, uh, it's outrageous. And, uh, you know, when you see the other ones out there who just are lucky they haven't gotten caught let yet, like the Lindsay Lowens. Oh, and, exactly. And, she will. She'll have her day in court. Yeah, but, I guarantee it. But then what happens? Does she get let go like Paris Hilton? Or now is there going to be new focus on celebrities who get caught doing things? Maybe they get uh, more severe treatment than the average person just because of all this Well, this I don't publicity. believe, I mean, I don't think that should be. I don't think anybody should get more severe treatment. 
if the crime's the same and is the misdemeanor, I don't think because you're a celebrity you should agree. either get privileges or be treated harsher than the you know original civilian. But being a celebrity, you are going to have those privileges of being in a one man cell. I'm not worrying about getting shanked or stabbed or you know, uh, um, you know, raped in in prison. She's going to be in her own cell, keep away status, being moved by two deputies and a supervisor at all times. You know, she hasn't made, and now she's crying in court telling her parents, "I love you. I can't." Oh, that's uh, um, that that just made my day. All for I serving, loved it. all for serving a little over two weeks, which is what she'll end up serving here. A little over two weeks. Unbelievable. John, we appreciate what you do. Thanks for the call. Our email address, Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.